This is my desktop CNC router making a wholesale order of walnut trays worth over $1,800 back in 2018. In this video, I'm sharing my top seven reasons why a CNC side hustle is the perfect side hustle in 2024. Number one on the list is CNC is affordable for your garage and not just big factories. So I've been saying this for a while now that CNC has become cheaper to the general public uh, and more accessible. The last 10 years have been very key. There's been a huge surge in that. And it's, it's really, really cool that we can have many manufacturing factories in our garages or basements. Number two on the list is being able to start and stop and work on CNC at different times that fit your schedule. One of the things I've always enjoyed about CNC is that there's a natural progression in projects. It doesn't demand like, oh, I've got to spend all weekend. Now, you'll probably want to because it's fun and exciting, but like I've got to spend all week on this project and I can't have any interruptions. No, you can start and stop um, pretty easily. The third reason why CNC is the perfect side hustle is because you can make profitable passion projects. At the end of the day, if this is a hobby or a side hustle for you, it should be fun. Keeping it fun is extremely important. You already have a job. You don't need another one. There are people out there that have the same interests as you. So make things that you think are cool and then find your people. When you find them, they will buy from you. Maybe you just want to make enough money to pay for your machine and then just want to do projects for fun. Make gifts for family and just enjoy CNC as a hobby. That's completely fine too. Number four, creating products that are in demand. Like this one I'm working on right now. In a lot of ways, this is the linchpin in a successful CNC side hustle. It is creating products that people want. Now, I talk a lot about that on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss my next videos. So when you have a CNC machine in your garage, you're able to draw inspiration from anywhere around you, jump on the computer, uh, design it up or buy files, and then it's here. So you're just able to create right away. Imagine sitting at your kitchen table and your wife or your husband says, hey, this would be really cool to have. And you get an idea and you can run into your workshop and you can create it in an evening. That's really cool. To make sure that 2024 is the most profitable year for all CNC side hustles, uh, whether you haven't started one yet or you're, you've been in it for a long time, I put together a free guide of my top 10 proven CNC products that are easy to create and sell. So be sure to head to the link in the video description and get that free guide. Number five is rapid repeatability. So once you find something that works, you're able to create multiples of it. Like I did here, uh, I'm creating two bowls, but if I had more room, technically I could have created a third here. Um, but if I had more room on my CNC, like I could have created four of them. But back to the previous one, doesn't make sense to create a lot of something that isn't in demand. And that's really why you should go grab that free guide because that's literally the key to this whole thing. Number six, make more money when the time is right. I sell most of my physical products uh, leading up to Christmas. Basically from September to Christmas, uh, I'm jumping into physical products and selling them. I don't do it year round, yes, and you will make mistakes. I made mistakes were made here, but um, every mistake is a learning opportunity and it's pretty easily corrected as you'll see here in a second. Selling seasonally, whatever that may be, uh, aligning a product with a season, whether it be, you could do Father's Day. Maybe you have a sweet Father's Day idea um, for a product, and that's the only time of the year that you do it. You make a couple thousand dollars uh, at that time or more, uh, and that's all you do. The rest of the year is just playing with your machine, learning new things. Anything with seasonality, you can gear towards that and you can lean into it. And so. With that date on the calendar, you know you have to ramp up to it. You're gonna be spending more time on your, with your CNC and making and finishing projects, products and selling and shipping. Um, but it's really easy to lean in when the time is right. 
Number seven is to make personal products. Could you buy a bowl like this anywhere? Uh, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. This came out of my head, but I'm sure it's not the first wooden bowl ever made. Uh, but what you could do is you could add some sort of personalization, some sort of design in the middle of it here, whether a name, a date, a funny saying, a joke. With CNC, what that does is it gives you the ability to sell one of a kind items to people. People feel like it's made just for them. So not only can you replicate a lot of things with CNC, you can also personalize them. All right, number eight. I've got a bonus one here for you. Number eight is the number of resources that are available uh, to you getting started in CNC. When I first started, got into CNC in 2000, uh, uh, 2017 is when I first got an interest. And uh, there wasn't a ton, um, if any, resources consistent resources on the internet about how to make money with a CNC machine. I applied previous business knowledge um, while I was learning the machine and uh, I, I really had to struggle through that. But now there are tons of resources out there. And you know, I'm actually gonna link, I'll link my favorite resources down in the description below just for you to check out um, some of the, the places where I would look if I was gonna get started other than myself. I'm probably the best resource available, you know, if I'm, I may be biased a little bit, but there's some great um, people out there that have, are sharing their experiences as well. And so I will link them in the description below. While you're in that description, uh, be sure to download the free guide that I have available with the 10 uh, proven products uh, for 2024. So CNC is the most profitable year for everyone involved in CNC. Be sure to check that out and download it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. See ya. So you may be wondering, what the heck did you create these bowls for? Honestly, I created them just to create. Uh, I love coming out into the shop and creating projects and I kind of miss that. So just talking to the camera, um, one just isn't as fun for me, isn't as fun for you. So let me know, do you like this style? Do you like the project? Um, I'm sure you have questions on the project itself. So a couple things, this is made out of mahogany. It's just a catch-all tray. It'll sit on the counter and you can put your change, fruit, junk, whatever uh, in it. So just a project that I designed up in um, CAD. Maybe I will do a full video on um, that process. Uh, but I literally made this file this morning and um, I had the wood already here. It was already milled up from the Christmas trees I did a while back. And so I put all those things together and created uh, this bowl. Now, I have a lot of experience. I have seven years of experience of designing projects. And so uh, I wouldn't expect someone that's brand new to be able to jump in and do this, this would take them a lot longer. Okay, one thing I do want to address because a lot of you that have experience will have this question is, what was the burning on the one that I screwed up? What happened was, is so my material was an inch and seven eighths thick and it's really hard. Actually, don't try it at home. Don't try to cut through almost two inch thick material with a two and a half inch bit they make longer bits. I didn't have one. I was trying to make it work. Um, so I had some rubbing in two places. One, in the tool path, in the pocket itself. And two, um, at the top. My collet, actually, I didn't have enough clearance. And so it rubbed on the top. But I did have it set too deep. So with a, a couple tweaks and not getting as deep, um, I made it work. And I uh, had to kind of finagle a little bit. I didn't have much clearance as you can see, as you saw in those, uh, in those shots um, of the profile cut, not much clearance, but it worked. I was able to sand all the burn marks off and they came out great. So it wasn't project ending. Uh, and again, it could all been solved with uh, a three inch or three and a half inch long reach bit. So if you have any other questions about this project, let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to grab the guide down in the description below and I will see you in the next video.